Hello, my name is Bruce Frayne from Brankus Creations and thank you for joining my stream. Please let me know if audio and video are all okay as usual. Um, so um, I'm trying something a little bit different today with the audio. I'm actually back to using my little lapel microphone. Uh, I had some problems with some crackling with that before and I've been using this sort of microphone here on my desk. Yeah. Um, but I thought I'd go back to the lapel mic and just see how we go. So well, and I'm, I've gone all super fancy. Um, I'm wireless. Hey, look at that. So I can get up and walk around and, uh, and talk without having to cut leads around with me. So uh, we'll just see how it all goes. Um, you know, we can, people can let me know if there are problems with the audio or anything like that. Um, so a quick uh, hello to everyone. Hello to everyone who's watching and uh, I'm just going to go, oh, the chat's been busy. Look at that. I'm just going to go through and say hello, Jay. Hello, Dana. Hello, Trina. Hello, Michael. Hello, GT. Hello, Oz Retro Comp. Um, yum, yum, yum. I think, is that it? Is that it? Oh, well, there's more here. Hello, Dana. Uh, and second Dana. Male D Dana and female Dana. Um, who else? Uh, yep, yeah, I think they'll. Hello, Scarlet Swordfish. If I missed anyone, feel free to say hello again. And if you are watching this stream for the first time or watching one of my streams for the first time, please jump on and say hello. Always like to uh, to get a hello from folks who are watching. Hello, Captain Three One Eight or Three Eighteen. How are you prefer? I say Three Eighteen because of the engine, but you might prefer Three One Eight. Um, so um, as you might have got the slightest hint from the subject line of this particular video. I'm going to be recapping an Amiga 600, which is a bit unusual for me. Um, I don't, well, I shouldn't say it's unusual for me. It's unusual for my live streams. My live streams are usually very uh, Mac focused, but uh, um, I, you know, the Amiga people, there's, Amiga has a very, very loyal following. And I've had quite a few people contact me saying, oh, you know, if you recap Amigas, you're going to get so much work. Well, I've been recapping Amigas for a while, and I've done a few, not a huge amount, but they're out there. Um, Retro Redrum, hello. Um, oh, pardon me. Um, so, anyhow, the um, I've, this is actually the first time I've done, done an Amiga 600. I've done Amiga 1200s, much bigger board than this one. Let's just jump onto the side view here and have it. Oh, that's a little bit zoomed in, isn't it? Mm, no. Okay, so here we are, and once again in my super messy uh, workshop, here's the Amiga 600 board. As you can see, quite a little board, because it is quite a small computer, the Amiga 600. Um, and, uh, and that's it there. Um, over here, for any of the Mac people watching, you'll see a little familiar sign here, a little M Motorola logo, and MC68000, so uh, Motorola 68000 uh, CPU hovering in there which of course is the same as you would find in a Macintosh 128K, 512K, Macintosh Plus, Macintosh Portable, Macintosh Classic. I think that's all of them. Remind me if I've missed one. Um, so, uh, and yeah, as I say, so the, the Amigas definitely have a, a very loyal following and I, and I can quite understand why. I mean, they, um, they were, I think, well ahead of their time with a lot of their computers. And, and of course, if you're someone that enjoyed playing games at the time, these things were amazing uh, with games. So, you know, just like in terms of like arcade game, you know, copies and stuff like that, really good stuff. So, um, as I say, I totally, I totally get it. I, un I understand why, you know, Amiga has such a loyal following. But of course, have you seen the prices of these things on eBay lately? I mean, I don't know if they they actually do go for those prices, but when you see what people are listing them for, wowzers. Um, so anyhow, needless to say, at least people that have these Amigas are wanting to keep them, uh, keep them strong. Hello, Steve. Welcome to the stream. Uh, hello, Mike. Um, thank you for joining the stream. Um, so, um, I'm, I think we're, we're all quietly hoping that, uh, Steve is going to maybe have a stream a little bit later today or tonight, maybe after mine, maybe, maybe tomorrow, because, uh, Steve has some exciting additions to his collection. Uh, and of course I should also mention while Mike is here that Mike, uh, Mike's Mac Shack, jump along there, have a look. He has a giveaway at the moment and, uh. There's a bit of elastic just falling down off the shelf. Uh, oh, look at that. Thank you, Mike. There we go. Um, 
save all the Omega's eat it Joes. There you go. So, uh, um, so anyhow, I am, uh, if my back recovers, that's from Steve. So we'll see whether Steve has the, uh, the stamina to do a live stream after this. We'll see. We might have to wait till he's had a chance to recover. He's, uh, the addition, just to give you an idea, the addition to his collection has involved so much lifting that now his back hurts. So that might just give you an idea of how much of an addition to his collection it is. Um, so, um, <laughs> it'll be a stream of me watching Bruce's stream. So, I'm hoping that this won't go on too long. And look, I also want to apologise for folks who have um, been, you know, who, who folks who were watching my last stream, I think I was recapping a colour classic and I said I was going to be doing another stream soon after that. So, I had a huge amount of work. Um, and unfortunately, I didn't. And that was because I did have so much work. I just sort of, you know, just sort of buried my head in the work and did it and I didn't bother about streaming it. Stupidly, I recapped a Macintosh Color Classic analog board and I realized that I don't have any videos of that on my channel anywhere. And so I did it without recording it, without streaming it, nothing, and I feel very stupid. So my apologies, but I'm sure more will come in because, well, Macintosh Color Classic analog boards do leak. Um, and um, I also ended up with a, a Macintosh SE30 with the most incredible tra trace damage, and that would have been fun to show as well. But that's that. No use crying over spilt milk. That is all done and gone. Now we are into the Amiga stage. So I don't have this on my website yet because I'm not even sure where I'm supposed to put it because it's a Macintosh recapping website. This is my cheat sheet for the Amiga 600 with all of the caps that you need and where they all go. Um, I will put a link to this in the description. It's not there yet. As I say, I've just got to figure out where I'm going to put it. I might have to make an Amiga section on my recapper Mac, Mac website. Let's hope that doesn't cause an incident. Um, so, uh, Alex, thank you for joining. Oh, and Jay has... I, I bet you he, he logged on and then disappeared again. Well, so welcome, Jay. This is now a, a proper welcome. Um, <laughs> is Steve streaming? Is he? I don't know. Um, okay, so uh, how many Amiga models are there anyway? Uh, and we've got a question. Six? Wouldn't have a clue. I really wouldn't have a clue. I'm definitely not an Amiga expert at all. All I know about Amigas are the things that the owners have told me when I've, um, you know, when they've brought their boards to me for recapping, whether I've asked them for it or not. Um, they've told me stuff about, you know, sort of the construction and stuff like that. So, you know, anyhow, that's all good. Um, so anyway, if anyone does know how many uh, different models there are, as I say, I know there's a, oh, what's the, what's the, what is it? 6,000 or I'm not sure there's one that actually looks more like a traditional PC rather than like a little piece of kind of uh, more like a you know like an early 80s micro type almost like a game console my cat's meowing sorry if you can hear that um, so um, I was tasked with building a Lego truck for my son fair enough that's I've I've um, built Lego for youngsters before as well or with youngsters we say with youngsters, but at the end of the day, it's for them, isn't it? Um, but um, now, uh, just having just having a quick catch up on this on the stream here. Um, okay, okay, Mike, 500, 600, 1,000, 2,000, 4,000. So the four thousand. So the person I picked this up from yesterday, I, they had a I think it was a four thousand as well. Um, that rings a bell. Um, the tower version. 3000 T and 4000 T. This is good. We're getting excellent information here about the Amigas. That's fantastic. Um, sorry, I can't be the provider of that information, but as I say, it's definitely not my area other than doing the recapping. Now, one thing I really should mention straight off the bat, I, as I say, I do recap these Amigas. I charge more for these than I charge for recapping the, um, the Max. Now, that's not me just being mean and awful. The reason why I do, there are two reasons. Uh, the first one is that there is a website, I'll put the link in the description a little bit later on, of someone who has posted sort of like a, let's call it a definitive guide to recapping uh, uh, Amigas. And in that he provides all sorts of information about the sorts of capacitors you need to use. And it has become the kind of accepted norm, you know, th these are the caps you use. Um, he specifically sourced um, um, sort of the polymer hybrid electrolytics 
and he's specifically going for low SER ones. Uh, and they are expensive components. So for me to buy the components just to do this recap costs me more. So that's one of the reasons why I charge more. The other reason I charge more is because of this little area here. Well, let me just see if I can get a little side view, a bit of a zoom in if I can. Maybe just hold it there like that. This section here with all these tight little nest of capacitors here. It's a real bugger to work with. So uh, it just, you know, takes, it's a little bit extra work and it takes a little bit extra time. So that's, that's the reason why I charge a bit more. But the main reason I charge more is the, the components cost more. Now, for those who may not know what a um, uh, hybrid polymer electrolytic capacitor is, it's a capacitor that looks like an electrolytic surface mount electrolytic capacitor, but it's actually uh, using um, polymer powder instead of electrolyte fluid. That's my understanding anyway. And so they are not likely to leak. So, and apparently with these uh, Amigas, you need to replace with electrolytics. You can't use tantalum, something to do with the ESR requirements. So there we go. There's the, there's the, the news on that one. Um, Brock, hello. Um, yeah, it's it's really interesting that the fact that Commodore did, you know, sort of uh, finish up. I think there are a lot of people that felt that the product they had was, you know, was su superior. Um, and, um, and you know, I mean, I know there were at the time sort of arguments between Apple users and Amiga users. And of course, there's that general feeling that, a, a Mac, uh, that Apple was going to tank but I mean, in the 90s. And then, of course, Commodore went, oh, well. Uh, Mr. Crimstar, hello, welcome to the stream. Um, right, now I've got to just catch up on this. There's a little bit of chat going on here. Um, just make a MISC page on your site, Bruce. It'll get filled up. Yeah, that's what I'm probably going to do. Um, okay, just ask Jan Beta. I don't know who Jan Beta is, sorry. Um, Okay, that's one of the few things I wouldn't recap myself. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear people saying this isn't one they do themselves. It's making me nervous. Um, all right. Okay. Well, look, I think at the end of the day, we need to get rolling on this. Um, I'm probably going to remove the um, the the big uh, through-hole radial electrolytic capacitors first, because that'll just free up a bit of space for getting some of those other caps off. Now, obviously, with through-hole capacitors, we have to um, desolder them from the other side. Um, now, so I've got to just lo locate where these pins are. So here in here. Now, um, let's just go in and do some microscoping, shall we? I think this one does that. Yeah, there we go. So, oh, 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 there we go. Let's get into focus. Let's just make sure that's nice and in focus. I know it's a little bit blurry, but, you know, it needs a clean. It needs a clean. Right, so there's a couple of through, through holes there. Now, as usual, um, I have, um, in my streams before, I have talked about the ways in which you can remove solder from, uh, you know, a through hole component like this. And uh, you can use a, you can use, try and use a bit of solder wick. You can try and use a solder sucker. And you can try and use a mechanical desolderer like something like this guy here. Meow, meow, meow. Um, with this one here, I'm probably going to, as much as possible when I'm doing my recapping, I like to try and demonstrate procedures that you can, you can do yourself. Now, I don't want to use solder wick on this one. And the reason is that well, if we have a look at the wick, let me just cut this. Cut it, cut it, cut it. This, if I put that there, you can see that if I go and try and suck that out, I'm in danger of sucking up some of the solder from these components on either side because everything's so crammed together. Um, so then I can obviously try and use a solder sucker. I can try that as long as I can get the heat right where I want it. We'll give it a whirl. We'll try one like that anyway and see how we go, see if we get much out. Let's get some heat. Sorry, it's the soldering iron's just heating up. Okay, that's, I can see it getting warm. How do we go? Yeah, not the best. It's not ideal. Looks a little dirty, but it's just, that's just a little bit of the UV mask there. 
the solder mask. So I think I'll probably end up using my, um, uh, what do you call it, my uh, uh, mechanical solder sucker because I think it's the best way to get these out with doing, um, you know, doing as little damage as possible to the board. So let's just do that. And for those out there who might be thinking, oh, you know, I want to do this, but I can't afford a solder sucker. They're really not that expensive. The one I've got is a cheapie. So if you do want to do this, I'm putting more solder on this. That always seems stupid. I know, counterintuitive. Putting more solder on something you want to remove the solder on, but it's it's generally just the best way to go. It uh, comes off easier. All right, so let me see if I can tele zoom into this. There is a spider walking on this on this board at the moment. Just to see if I can see him. There he is, Sam. Hello, spider. I'm not sure if he's like radioactive or anything like that. I don't think if I get bitten by it, I don't think I'll turn into Spider-Man. And besides, I can't be Spider-Man and Batman, can I? Right, so let's put my magnify glasses on here. And let's see if I can... These ones here. Let's see if I can select these out. That looks pretty good. Uh, uh, okay, let's just uh, catch up. We've got a lot of chat going on here. Uh, I actually own an Omega 500. I did a uh, little contra deal with someone. I did some recapping for it. And they had an Omega 500 and they didn't want it. And it was just at the time that I had someone uh, who was going to send me an Omega. And I thought, oh, I should maybe learn a little bit about these before I recap them. Um, so... Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. I think back in the day, because I was thinking about it, I think I found it. Okay, didn't know Australia made spiders that small. Yes, we do have little ones as well. Uh, little friendly ones. Actually, they're all pretty friendly, apart from the funnel web. The funnel web is a real cow. I mean, it's not a cow. It's a spider, obviously. There is no bovine association whatsoever. But, um, okay, so I've got most of the solder out. I'm just going to give these pins a little nudge with the soldering iron to help it come out, which you couldn't see because it wasn't in camera because that's just how I roll. Um, but what I have here now is a cute little capacitor. Um, just going to have a quick little look at that under the microscope. I don't see any leakage on that one. I, this is something I really should have done before. My apologies for not doing this. I'm going to just jump into this view here, jump onto the microscope, and I just want to sh give us a quick little inspection. So this is the capacitor I just removed there. Okay, so all good, all gone, nice and neat and tidy, ready for a new one. Everyone's happy. Over here, okay, now look at that. You seeing what I'm seeing? Seeing corrosion and leakage. So these are 22 microfarad, 25 volt capacitors. As you can see, they have leaked all over the shop. Now, interestingly enough, when I did the two Omega 1200s before, neither of them had any visible sign of capacitor leakage. They were getting them recapped, so let's call it future proofing, whatever you want, but there was absolutely no leakage on either of them when I recapped them. Whereas this one has got quite significant leakage. So it's just interesting to note, I don't know if that was something to do with the capacitors they used on the 600 versus the 1200, or whether it's got to do with just time, when certain models came out, I'm really not sure. But, so, um, now just for those who are regular watchers of my stream, this is what we refer to as scunge, which is a dry um, sort of build-up. Uh, gunge is a more of a wet build-up. Well, this is a dry build-up, so this is what I call scunge. Um, <clears throat> let's have a look here. Up here. Okay, once again, we've got some leakage there. One of the ways you can always... I don't know what that is. That's droppings of some sort of creature. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Um, so, one of the ways you can usually tell when there, there's been leakage is the dust adheres to the goo. So you get this build-up of dust around it, and that's, of course, then you get the build-up of moisture and corrosion, all that sort of stuff. Um, okay, so let's come over here. 
look at this looking 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 yeah, definitely got some yeah look at that yeah that, this one's relatively recent leakage there you can still see this is still shiny yeah leakage lots of leakage so you know i have to say with this we're definitely talking about getting to this uh in the nick of time because this is only going to get worse from here on in the longer this is left unused the worse it's going to get i mean or used for that matter but the point is that if someone gets something like this and stores it away in a garage or in a shed or in a cupboard or something like that that's just going to be sitting there licking away and corroding away nice um is scunge worse than gunge well i, I don't know that's a good question i'm not sure that one's worse than the other um okay so let's continue with this capacitor removal let me just uh jump on here very quickly and see Six concurrent viewers. Six, a whole six of you. I'll tell you what, you guys are keeping the chat busy for only six of you. Um, okay, so let's continue. Uh, where are we? Okay, so once again, I'm just going to go on to my side view here. Yes, I'm going to be using my shoulder sucker. Now, Again, I'm going to add some new solder to these holes here. Yeah, only six viewers? It says 22 watching on my end. Oh, well, okay. Well, you're probably right. Mine's probably not right. I'm going to, I will blame. I am going to blame uh, YouTube because that's what we all do. Uh, we blame YouTube. Well, if there are 22 people watching, I thank you. As I say, my little... Uh, oh, God, now, it is, now it's saying 22. <laughs> okay, I was just looking in the wrong place. Or it's showing the wrong place, the thing there. So, thank you to the 22 people who are watching. It's a lot better than six, that's for sure. Um, okay, so adding some solder here to the pins that I want to desolder. Um, like that. It just works better with uh, solder suckers and things like that to actually add a little bit more fresh solder to it. You see, it sucks out a lot easier. Oopsie. There we go. I'm doing this in a very inefficient way, aren't I? I'm doing it like one capacitor at a time. Come on. There we go. I'll tell you what, those solder suckers just make life so much easier when it comes to taking capacitors like this off. It's fantastic. Um, okay. I see a bit of gunge here. Actually, it looks like a bit of flux, re residual flux. Someone might have resoldered this. I'm just going to jump onto the microscope and show you what I'm referring to. Now, if my sound just suddenly goes dead, please let me know. This wireless thing is, um, is run on a battery, and I have spare batteries, but I don't know how long the battery is going to last. See that? That interesting this middle one here doesn't look particularly well soldered. I might actually just remove the solder and clean these up a little bit. And I assume that's meant to be empty. But that's uh it's an interesting one, isn't it? In it. Um I always get a little bit sus about seeing flux on a board. Um, you know, has someone else been here? Or is that left over from manufacturing? Um you know, who knows? I um, I had an, uh, an interesting situation recently for those who watched the stream where I worked on a 15-inch MacBook Pro from 2015, I think. 20, I can't remember. I don't know. It was a reason, let's say reasonably recent, more recent than the stuff I normally work on. And um, I... Um, um, and there was flux all over it because it had actually been worked on by Apple as part of a repair. Um, very badly done, of course. Um, especially given that it didn't work. So we're just cleaning these up a little bit here, putting some nice new solder on them. Make them look pretty. There we go. Much nicer. See? I'll look after these things. I do. I do. 
Now this will of course go into the ultrasonic cleaner afterwards. I'm just gonna, there we go, my alcohol little um, reservoir thingy is a little empty and I can't be bothered filling it up. Uh, once this is all ultrasonically cleaned, that will all look spotless. Okay, that'll do. The rest will come off in the ultrasonic. Uh, okay, yes. Yeah, so I just I just went on a little rant there before, and I didn't really finish my story. So it was a um, oh look, someone's had a go at that as well. Um, it was a, uh, a Macintosh um, uh, PowerBook that has a known problem with a GMUX chip that was never soldered on properly in the first place. Uh, Apple's solution to that problem was to uh, put a little bit of flux around it and put a little bit of a hot air station onto it and then stick a little rubber thing on top of it to try and make it push down on, closer onto the board rather than actually doing it properly and resoldering it. So, um, which is what I ended up doing. I ended up removing the component, cleaning up the pads, putting it back on, resoldering it, making sure it was all making beautiful contact, and the problem was solved. And this is apparently a computer that went back to Apple four times. So, and then they eventually turned around and said, it needs a new logic board, that'll be $900, thank you. So, you know, I mean, um, I've had, personally, have had nothing but good things to say about Apple in terms of their service history. But other people have had some shocking experiences. Um, all right, so we've got two more caps to remove. We've got this and these. These two here, where I've got my great big fat finger. I'm gonna do these two together. And these two. God, everything's close together. No soldering irons involved, yes. Uh, yes, I can. Uh, I, that's not surprising. I mean, I guess, I think the biggest issue I had with that whole thing with that GMUX chip was it was a manufacturing fault. And at no stage did Apple ever attempt to actually resolve that. They really just put Band-Aids on it. And they kind of just kept putting band-aids on it until these things were out of um, warranty. Or out of the service repair thingy, program thingy. That one didn't come out too well. I don't know. It's not too bad. So let's just go and have a look at these now. See how they look once they have been desoldered. Um, um, yeah, there we go. There's that. I don't like the way they've been bent. Um, it makes them harder to get them out. But it's standard practice. I mean, I bend them, but I don't bend them like that. I bend them just a little bit. Okay. Now let's just give that a little nudge away from the side. Uh, come on. And that one. And that one. These aren't going to come out easily, are they? <coughs> These ones are going to be cows. Come on, you cow. Okay. I'm doing stuff off camera here. It's because I'm a professional. There we go. One's out. So all I'm doing now is I'm holding the capacitor on the other side. I'm just applying a little bit of heat to each pin. On this one, I can tell that this one's already free. So I'm just going to apply some heat to that one. Yeah, get that through. There we go. So that, I think, is it for the through holes. Yes, it is. That's all of the through holes. So now we've just got the... Uh, the fun of getting all these darned surface mounts off without burning anything or melting anything or destroying anything or anything. So as usual, I have my heat sinks, um, little blade, cutter blade things from one of these, where you can just get these blades and snap them to whatever length you want. If you haven't watched my stream before, I'm doing that for your benefit because 
people who watch my streams all the time know that I use these, but if you haven't watched my stream before, that's what I use. And then I get little springs like this. Ding. And I hook them over so I can rest them on the board and hold them up. Um, obviously with this, we are surrounded by plastic here. So I'm gonna have to be super careful. Cause I mean, look at this thing, this uh, coil here, it's got uh, plastic on the bottom, bottom of it. I've got to try and get these out. I mean, I don't see any other way I can get them out than hot air. I couldn't even get a soldering iron in there. I mean, should I just take this coil off? It's got four. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I'll see how I go. If it looks like I'm destroying things, I will. Oh, goodness me. Dag nabbit. I just don't know if I'm going to be able to get heat in there without destroying things. Let's see what happens, eh? Uh... Just checking to make sure that there isn't something I need to pay attention to here. Uh, well, there you go. See? You just need to speak to the right people. Unfortunately, uh, Brock, we can't really call Mr. Jobs anymore. And I'm not sure that Mr. Cook would be quite as forthcoming. Okay. So, hot air here. I'm keeping a very close eye on what's going on with the coil underneath it. That came off nice and easy. There we go. Alrighty, so well that wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, but I can tell you what, it's going to be a nightmare when I come to put the new one on. I'm going to have to take that coil off, you know. I, 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 I don't know what else I could do, really. Um, I can put the solder on there and apply some hot air and hope that I can just get the component down. Oof. There's just no room for a soldering iron in there. Clearly, if you were putting this together as a kit, the coil goes on last. All right, coil's coming off. Oopsie. Um, yep, that's the one. So, I hadn't planned taking this coil off, but I really don't think I have an option. All right. Get some light over here, shall we? Light. Illumination. Uh, the call is, uh, it's, it's, uh, well, actually, actually, Mike, where's Mike's Mac Shack? He'll know. It's, um, it's some sort of filter, filtery thing to do with the power supply. Nice big pins on that one and nice big holes, so they uh, desoldered really well. Now she comes. So we just have to remember uh, we not to lose that. Yeah? We won't lose that. That will definitely make it easier to put those components on there, so I think it was worth the extra whatever that was, 60 seconds to do. <coughs> I recap day 600 is a worth of fortune. <gasps> I'm sitting on a gold mine. That's not mine. All right. So I see this little row here as being my next uh, victim. <sighs> Once again, crammed right up next to something else that I may end up having to remove if I can't get a soldering iron in there later on. These are 100 microfarad 6.3 volt capacitors. You will find this size capacitor on some mats as well. There's three more caps off and all you've got a view of there is my ugly heat shield. There you go, look at that, look at it, look at it. 
Got the slightest amount of meltage around there, but you know, it's something that you can notice very well here when you look under the microscope, but you won't see that when you uh, look at it with the nude eye. There we go. Okay, now let's prevent that from any further and pop that there. Protect our little bit of plastic there. And let's look around for any other plastic in the vicinity. I like this one. You like that? Little capacitor hanging across there. Cute. Um, let's get some more heat shields in here. I've got to protect this board, protect the dignity of this board. So I had a uh, an interesting little haul yesterday. I went for a drive and picked up a few new Macs. Oh, when I say new, new in my collection, not new at all. And uh, I got a Macintosh 2VI, which is, I've already got a 2VI, I don't really need another 2VI, but I got a uh, Power Mac 7600 132, does that sound right? Um, megahertz. So that's a 604, and I've always wanted one of those 7500, 7600 computers, the ones that have the uh, daughter card for the CPU, because I've actually got a few CPUs. I've got some upgrades and stuff, so I'm going to suit this one up. So I was quite pleased with that. It's nothing like the haul that Steve got today, but still. I think this might be leaded solder on this, you know. These are giving up quite easily. Uh, here we are. Factory fitted bodge. I love that. Yes, there have seen a few of those on Macs as well. A little bit of factory fitted bodge. Um, what angle am I going to come at this at? How about this angle? Oops. No, not that angle because I can't fit it under the microscope. Oh. What did you get there, Mac 84? Yeah, what did you get there, Mac 84? I don't want to give anything too much away. Steve needs to... Uh, Steve needs to reveal that when he's ready. Right. Oh, God, there's some stink on that one, I tell you. Most of them have been okay, but yeah, that one really stank. So stanky. Look at that. Yeah. So definitely no doubt about the leakage going on there. Oh, man, I just feel like it's just... Well, I, look, we got, at least we've got that all that little nest of caps off there. So now we've got this, and oh, isn't that beautifully positioned? Right next to a piece of plastic here and a piece of plastic here. How the hell am I going to get a soldering iron under that? How am I going to do it? Answer me that. Riddle me this, riddle me... Am I going to have to take this whole thing off? You realise I've got two of these Amiga 600s here to do at the moment. Two. I'm not doing two of them today, but at least I know what I'm up for for the next one. Dag nabbit. Consign it. I thought SE30s were bad. At least it makes me feel better about charging more for these. Open wide. Yeah, two of them, what are the odds? I know. Uh, I'm going to have to take this thing off. I'm going to have to take this thing off. I mean, I'm not at all happy about it, but I, there's no way I'm going to be able to get those components on there without melting this connector. I just there's no there's no room for a soldering iron just at all. 
I mean, it is, there's about, you know, for those in the uh, metricated world, about one and a half millimetres of space to fit through there. And then I have to come at that at an angle to then try and get solder on it. So, uh, oh dear, oh dear. Which way around does this go? That way, that way. I have got photos, so the photos will tell me, won't they? Not really. It looks to me like it can go on either way. Which is, is, is a bit annoying. So I might make a note on my little little diagram here. I'm gonna go like this. There we go. I've exaggerated the appearance of the thing on my little drawing. All right, so here we go. More interesting times. Yay. Sorry, guys. It's a little bit dull, isn't it? Come on. I'm all hooked up. Uh -huh. All right. I'm just going to check the chat before I do this, because I'm going to be out of the chat for a while. Uh... Yes, you can take the keyboard plastic connector off to make a bit more room, yeah. I, th I don't think it's going to give me enough, to be honest. I did consider that. I think I'd still end up melting the bit underneath it, and I just don't want to do that. So. Look, if I had to do this with a... Oh, incidentally, uh, I was using this the other day and some of my uh, Mac Yak friends, quick mention of Mac Yak, uh, were saying that this machine, when I operate it, it sounds like someone going, um, 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 so. Some of these aren't coming out too well. Gonna add some solder. Let's just check and make sure that we're not clogged up here. Um, and that we're still sucking with some, uh, some vigor. <laughs> Wonder who that could be. Um, <laughs> Alex says, I think it sounds like a flux cow going moo. Okay, fair enough. Okay, so this is what I'm desoldering here at the moment, and I just have some concerns that I'm not getting all the solder out of these. Oh, it doesn't look too bad, maybe... So I might just go in and add some more solder to these. Sorry about this, folks. This isn't really recapping, is it? This is me whinging. Me whinging about an Omega 600 construction. <clears throat> Mind you, they didn't really have... I'm in the wrong camera, aren't I? They didn't really have um, recapping in mind when they were building it, did they? Do you, 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 do I'm doing this as fast as I can. Like solar lightning. All right. Flux counts. Well, the capacitor fairies, they're real. They're real. I stand by that. 
Um, <laughs> free range box car. This is part of the recapping. You see, I keep getting um, reassurance from my uh, my Macek friends that when I um, start apologising about how long a recapping is taking, they're just like, "That's just part of the recapping. Don't apologise." I appreciate that, fellas, for giving me a confidence boost. It's just amazing how much better this stuff comes out when you add solar. That one felt a little bit. few there that I don't like the look of. I might have to just redo those. We'll just have a quick look. What I'm looking for is uh, a nice clear hole all the way through. And some of them you can still see some solder in there. We'll just see how it goes. It might just come out. Nope, not coming out. Yes, thank you, GT, for reminding uh, reminding the chat of the Macyak show, which of course I always try and do in all of my streams. If you jump onto the Macyak um, YouTube channel or onto mac-yak.com, you find out more about us. We are a group of people who get together and talk about Macs. Uh, just in general, um, we talk about the, uh, the products, the culture, the history, the future, all that sort of stuff. Um, we don't talk about Amigas much though. Okay, how are we doing? This is looking a lot better now, I have to say. I do think this will come out now without too much more uh, convincing. Dirty tip. Yep, it's looking pretty good. Yep. Right, I don't think that'll take too much to get that off now. So let's give that a whirl, shall we? It's got a wiggle. It's definitely held on a little bit stronger up this end, this, this end rather than this end, but it is definitely giving. Come on, man. Give up the secrets. There's still something hanging on up here. It's this end. It's this end. Come out. Come out. G'day, John. Welcome to the stream. You, can, you arrived just in time for me to be getting really, really cross with this Amiga 600. Um, it's uh, the main issue I have is that 
it's been designed with lots of plastic components right next to components I need to replace, which gives me that issue of being concerned about melting things. And I don't want to melt things, so I am having to remove certain components. There we go, there was just one. There was just one still holding it on. So there we go, there's a little plastic guy removed. We'll put him to one side and put him on with all the other stuff. I'm gonna to have to take off this thing in order to get these components off. So now we have a nice clear um, access to these capacitors here. Uh, not so much for the removal, but for the putting the new ones back on. And as we can, excuse me, as we can see, we do have some fairly significant leakage here. Isn't, isn't that great? We love leakage. That's of course what I'm here for. Okay, so let's put this here. So just a little reminder to anyone who is joining a little bit late, this is not my typical recapping job. I am normally doing vintage maps, but I had a few people contact me and sort of say, hey, do you, you do Amigas as well? I can't find anyone to recap my Amiga. And uh, I was like, well, I mean, you know, a capacitor is a capacitor. I don't see any reason why I can't do an Amiga. Um, and so I had one guy sort of take a bit of a chance and he sort of said, okay, well, look, I'll, um, I'm going to, I'm going to risk it. I'm going to send you my board. I think he was pretty nervous to be honest. Um, and then he came and picked it up and he was just ecstatic. He was like, oh, this is so great. I'm going to tell all my friends about you. And so then I got a couple more and whoops, just lost the component. Anyone see that go? Pew! Now we have to find it. Here it is. It's a great big, that's surprising that came off. It's a great big flat resistor. Let's put that back on, shall we? And uh, yeah, so uh, put that, you know, put the, uh, um, you know, did that, did the, the Amiga 1200 and then, you know, sort of eventually had a couple of other people come and say, hey, do you do Amigas? And then I had a few sort of threatening to send them to me saying, oh, I'm going to send it to you soon. And then eventually they did send them. It wasn't just them talking about it. They actually ended up doing it. Maybe you need pliers. Oh dear, Dana. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. We all know there's some history in that comment, don't we? Uh, I'm just going to lower the uh, blowage of this thing here. I'm putting this back on. There we go. Like a bought one. Back on there. All right. Well, the worst thing, of course, when you blow a component away by accident is when you. Uh... So I'm just seeing something very weird here. The worst thing is when you. Um... Uh, oh, who is that? Uh, o A. Is, it, is that right? O A. Who sent me one dollar ninety nine in? Uh, I assume that's Canadian money. Thank you very much for that. I do appreciate it. Um, so, um, yeah, so what was I saying? Um, oh, yes. Um, when, you know, sort of the worst thing with, obviously, if you blow a component off by accident is making sure that you don't lose it. Gone. Um, that's where it helps to actually have, you know, a second board or a donor board or something like that, where if you do lose a component, you can um, grab it from somewhere else. This one here has no plastic around. Yay, for once. I've just turned, I'm keeping the temperature down only because these ones are coming off fairly easily. Um, and so are the components I don't want to come off. So, oh, there you go, dropped him. Uh, we're nearly there, guys. We've only got two more capacitors to remove. There we go, it's them here. And these are the really bad ones. These are the badly corroded ones, so. Um, Okay. So cutters and a Dremel. Yeah. I 
the drop off it's getting late here sorry i didn't see that before alex you probably already dropped off i say goodbye to you now though if you watch it again later on you can see me saying goodbye to you um uh, it's cool, yeah, no, it didn't show much resistance. Boom, boom, resistance is futile. Um, okay, uh, this is lovely and warm. Uh, what CPU does it have? This one has a Motorola 68000. Um, just asking for the capacity for it to show up, for sure. Uh, Hello, JJ Brewbaker. Welcome to the stream. Good to see your subs growing. Thank you very much for that. Yes, they have. I think I'm sitting at about 1,300 at the moment. Somewhere in that vicinity. It has been growing quite quickly since I started actually focusing on subscriber growth by actually posting fairly regular content and stuff like that. I, um, I mean, I've had a YouTube channel for donkey's years, but... Uh, when I decided to actually start going in and doing these little regular posts and stuff like that, regular streams, yeah, I've had uh, it's built up quite quickly. I guess I'm probably getting about 300 subs a month, something like that. Um, right, so this is the dirty one. Don't we love that one? Yeah, so the ultrasonic's going to have a little bit of work to do to get this all tidied up, but I can at least do the tidying up of these pads here. So that's all of the capacitors off. Let's just have a quick little side view of that because that's, well, you know, that's just how we do things here. So there's all the capacitors gone. Uh, we've just got an empty board, a board with no capacitors, and a microphone that I'm not using at the moment. Um, so, uh, yeah, nice. That's very nice. Right, so time to clean. Now, most of these are going to be very easy to clean. This is the worst part of the board here, so that's why I'm kind of doing it first. And what's the first thing we add when we're cleaning, ladies and gentlemen? We add flux. If you're interested in which flux I use, if you look in the description, you will find a link where you can buy it. It's Amtec NC599V2TF, and it's a very, very good flux. It's a nice flux. It's a happy flux. I like it. Um, if you are someone who is wondering what on earth is flux and why do you use it? I have a little video in my channel, uh, and it's called learning to solder or something like that. Beginner's guide to soldering, something along those lines. It's in the featured videos on my, uh, channel homepage. And on that, you'll uh, see a, an explanation of what flux is and what it does. And you'll see a demonstration of what it's like to do soldering with and without flux. So, um, for anyone who is interested. Okay, so we're just cleaning all this scunge off. Now this now, now that we've made this liquid, this is no longer scunge, this is now gunge. Okay, so we've, we've actually changed scunge from its solid state into its gunge liquid state. Now I'm using this uh, solder wick here for those who, again, who haven't seen my stream. I'm using solder wick or solder braid. Um, links to that in the description as well, which is basically just uh, copper, braided copper that has got flux in it. And when you run it over solder, it generally sucks that solder up. But what it also does is that it gives me a slight slightly abrasive surface to go in and tidy up these pads now there are a couple of things I want to have a look at here things that I don't like the look of and I'm just going to zoom in and show you what I'm talking about I've got right here got that little dark bit where the trace meets the pad and the focus meets the not focus okay so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scrape this very very gently with a scalpel I can tell from here that there's no break in the copper, but I just want to get rid of the black stuff. And we're going to do the same here. I'm going to clean that up a little bit. And then we're going to tin it with a bit of extra solder so that it all looks shiny. There we go. Right. There we go. 
Tinning. Tinning. So now that little area that was black is now shiny and coated in solder and out of focus. Uh, so that's there, and then that's there. Now, now, here comes the exciting part, part and I get some, whoopsie, I get some, uh, I, seriously, that is false advertising. There's nothing exciting about this part whatsoever. I just set it, you know, try and give it a bit of flair. I'm just going to get some isopropyl alcohol, and I'm going to clean this up. And it'll be all ready for putting new components on. Now, there are a couple of things that I don't like the look of as I glance around this area. And specifically, I don't like the way this is all crunchy here. So I'm feeling like I might take this component off, clean the pads up and plonk him back on. Because, you know, I do a proper job. Right, let's have a look here. Okay, well, we've got fung. Oh, we've got fung. What is the gas? That's a good, that's a, oh, wow. This is, I'm so glad I've got clever people watching this stream because I tell you what, I hadn't even thought about the gaseous state. Uh, okay. I've got a chicken about to join me by the sounds of things. The number of things I'm taking off this board is increasing. What about this diode here as well, or is that a transistor? I can't tell. Oh, that's okay. I think that's going to clean up. It's not really crunchy. It's that's that once that's been in the ultrasonic, I think that'll clean up okay. It's the crunchy ones that I like to uh, get rid of. What? 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 The chicken's eating something. I don't know what. Did I leave some food out by accident? Those who are watching who aren't aware, I have chickens. My workshop is out in a shed in my backyard. I mean, I say that it's not really, it's actually a studio. And I've gone to great lengths and expense to actually make a studio look like my shed. Um, but yeah, so I've got this shed workshop outside. And, um, and so every now and again, I get a visit from a chicken. Or what we in Australia call a chook. Meow. Need more flux. Desperately need more flux. Um, <laughs> Hello. What? Uh, it's, I, it's the same chicken that was on one of my other streams recently. Okay. I have seven of them in total, but most of them are actually restricted. They can't get here. She can get here because she's so small she can fly over the fence. Okay. The other one's a great big fat chickens that wouldn't be able to get over that fence no matter how hard they tried. Just cleaning up these pads. These pads feel really, really kind of brittle to me. They feel like they really wouldn't take much to get lifted off this board. So I'm being even more careful than usual. Um, you know, obviously when you're rubbing something like that over there and you're applying heat, those pads can just get lifted off by the heat, so you've got to be super, super careful. Right. That's looking nicer, isn't it? Hey. I've only ever actually lifted a pad by accident, I think, once uh, in recent times. I mean, obviously, when I, in the early days when I was learning to solder, I surely did it. But in recent times, I... I think it was a Macintosh 2CI, and it was I just totally underestimated how bad uh, the the um, the damage was around the area, and I just sort of ran a um, ran my soldering iron over it, and boop, off came the pad. I was like, "What? Got to be more gentle now." Come on, come on, come on. Maybe we should clean this a bit first, eh? Let's do that.
<sighs> We're getting a lot more than we bargained for in this video, aren't we? In terms of uh, recapping content. Um, Bernadette, well remembered. That's the chicken's name, Bernadette. Well, Bernie, as we sometimes call it, or as I call it, Chook. Um, the reason why her name is Bernadette is because we found her near a school called St. Bernadette's. Our other chickens have got more uh, creative names. We've got one called uh, Curry. And we've got one called uh, Ticker. And we've got one called Casserole. Um, uh, there we go. Just cleaning those pads up, making them look all nice. Be a lot easier when it comes to actually putting this component back on. Just take that extra solder off so that I've got a nice flat surface for sticking it on the board. I really need a heat mat. Well, yes, except that I really, this is my heat mat. I really don't care. What I did is I went and bought a desk and then I went and bought some, what is it, six ply? Six ply wood that I've just cut the stick on this, on top of the desk that I care absolutely not at all about burning. And when it gets to the point that it's burned to, the, to a stage that I can't use it anymore, I'll just lift off that plywood and put it back on. But I've had it on here for at least a year, so. Yeah, this guy is fine. It's a fine. Okay, let me just plonk that there. Right. So, let us continue. Just found a component on the table. I just wanted to check and make sure it wasn't from this, but it's not. It's from a completely different computer. It's from a much more modern computer, and I remember taking it off, but it's just still stuck on the desk. All right, so. These don't appear to have a dot for pin one, but they do have a little knit, little sort of pointy triangular thing here to show where the line should go. There, like that. So that's pin one there with the dot, little indentation. Stay, it's just so sticky because of all this flirts. Maybe I should have cleaned it with a bit of ISO before I did this. Never mind. Let's grab this. I'm going to just hold this in position. And I'm going to do what they do with weldering, welding. Uh, I'm going to do a little tack. Hold it there and tack. Just tack that one. And then I'm going to grab a little bit more solder. And I'm going to tack that one. Oh, look, I tacked two even. And, oh, look, I wasn't even in camera for my first tack. Hmm. Dag Nabbit once again. Now I'm going to put a whole bunch of flux on here and I'm going to do something that a lot of people say you shouldn't do, but I do it all the time, and that is I'm going to drag solder. I'll grab some solder here and it's going to drag up and down. Oh, it moved. Drag up and down. Like that. Like that. Like that. Like that. And that looks good enough for me. All right. I'm just going to clean this up with a toothbrush a little bit. I just saw another little, little black bit here. I just want to scrape. You didn't see any of that because it wasn't in camera. As I've explained before, I see a big circuit of you through the microscope. What gets captured by the camera is a rectangle from in the middle of the circle. So a lot of the time I end up doing things that you can't see because it's out. I don't realize it's outside of my field of view. Um, okay, so anything catching up? Welcome back, Jay. I hope everything went well with the Lego. Please do give me an update because I do like to know that Lego works out well. Um, uh, yes, poor chickens getting named after their future dishes. Now, we haven't eaten any of them, I will say. It would be counter counterproductive given the fact that they give us so many eggs. Um, okay, everything's catching. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, look, thank you, Danny, for looking up exactly what that thing does. So now we know. We know what little LF347M is. Um, so that's all good to know. Drag solo. It's a fast tack. It was a fast tack. I think I'm about 30 seconds behind. Better reload. Better. I'll tell you what, I'll just I'll stop talking for a bit while you reload. I'm not really going to stop talking for a sec. Okay, so we've cleaned up those two pads. We now need to move along and clean up all the other pads for all the other capacitors, which I'm going to need to grab my cheat sheet here because I don't know this board well enough to know exactly where they all go. I mean, I know I can hunt for the uh, the empty pads, but that's not always the best way of finding where something goes because, I mean, look here, there's an empty pad and there's nothing meant to be there. So uh, I actually know of an instance of someone that I spoke to, one of my customers who I've done some recapping for, they did some re... Oh, or have I? Maybe not. I might have bought some stuff from him. I'm not sure, but anyhow. And he was doing some recapping himself, and he didn't make a particularly good guide before he did it, and he ended up sticking components onto empty pads that weren't meant to have components on them. Uh, and that's that can happen. That's a... You know, that's a... Because if you are just going, oh, look, here, here's, I'm going to put this capacitor here and this capacitor here and another one there and another one here. It's like there are often times on boards where there are gaps where there aren't meant to be things. Um, you can usually tell them apart depending on how the board was manufactured. You can usually tell them about, apart because they have a, little, a nice little neat mound of solder on them. Um, that's because of the way these things are made. Um, but... Uh, it's not always a surefire way of knowing. The best thing to do is to, you know, if you're recapping something that there isn't a guide on my website for, um, take a photo of it beforehand. Um, if you have an opportunity to print it out or open it up in Photoshop or whatever and just do a little bit of a, uh, write some notes on it, what it is, what the component is, you know, sort of its capacitance, its voltage, its uh, orientation. And then when it comes to putting the uh, putting the stuff back together, it makes your life a lot easier. Uh. Oh, what is this? Twelve thirteen here in Oz, um, in Sydney. It's getting towards lunchtime. It's starting to get a little bit peckish. Okay, Scarlet Ford, you saw the question. Uh, oh, it's, it's, okay, excellent. Well, just let me know if you missed anything. I'll, uh, I'll keep you updated. Let me move this thing. This is shining my face out. Um, uh, with through hole, it is better to do remove one, replace one. Yes, well, I can understand that. That's not how I do it, but I can definitely understand doing it that way. Uh, does the A600 have a built in clock? I would think it does. Um, but I can't tell you that for certain because I, in all honesty, have never even switched one on. Um, 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 I'm just looking to see if I can find a a crystal with the normal time frequency, and it can't. I know certainly on. One of the devices I worked on, there there was a clock, but it was on an expansion card or something like that. But I, yeah, I don't know. Um, oh, GT, see you. Bye, GT. Enjoy the ice cream. Thank you for joining. Um, I'll still be here. Okay, no worries. Welcome back. <laughs> Enjoy the ice cream. <clears throat> right. Okay, let's just uh, continue with our pad cleaning efforts here. Uh, again, these are uh, a couple that were leaking, so we've got a fair bit of scunge and gunge and funge around. Right. Sometimes when I get really bad uh, blackening and corrosion on the pads, I will use a scalpel 
to scrape a bit off, but these don't look like they're going to need that. I can do, I think, everything that I need to do just with a bit of the wick and some gentle, ever so gentle rubbing. Having said that, having just said that, Having just said it, got some blackening here I don't like the look of. I scrape through until I see silver or I see copper. I'm just going to do this little guy here again. Just where you see these little dips, there's usually a little dip where the trace joins the pad. I just like to clean those up because they are a common weak point. I often end up with um, uh, computers that ha they break at that particular little dip where the, the um, pad joins the, the, uh, the trace. And so what I like to do is just make sure that there's copper exposed, that I can actually see that there is solder going from one side to the other. Uh, I'm going to uh, probably just put some flux along here and just tidy these up a little because we can see that there has been some leakage get underneath that component and seeing as I've got it off I may as well clean it up now what I generally do when I'm doing that sort of cleaning I grab a little bit of solder put it onto the end of my iron here like that and I get some wick like this and I let that solder flow into the wick and then I just do some gentle rubbing like this with wick and solder and heat and flux and nice big party Big solder party. This, of course, will all be covered up when the component is back on, when the connector is back on, but I just want to be sure everything looks okay. So I think this is the keyboard connector, if I am not mistaken. Um, and we do like to be able to use keyboards with our computers. I can see there's some breakage on that one there. That's probably the one that was a little bit hard to get off. But uh, once we've got the component in there and that all filled with solder, that's going to be fine. So, there we go. Oh, good. Yeah, look at that. It's nasty, isn't it? Hello, Chip. Don't look at that from the other side. Woo. Whoopsie. Yeah, we're fine. That's all good. All good. All good. Hello. Did you want to come and say hello to the peeps? You want to? No. Come on. Come on. Come on. Whoop. You can do better than that. Come on. Up we go. Okay. This is Bernadette. Bernadette, say hello to the people out there. Hello. Um, and uh, she is uh, just here to help. Uh, she sometimes holds the solder for me. Um, so, goodbye. No, 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 no. <laughs> that way, that way. There we go. Okay. Right. Um, uh, right, let's, sorry, I, I've just been missing chat here galore. What's going on here? Oh, okay, so we've got people now sort of pining for ice cream, which I can quite understand. Uh, on the, uh, okay, so, all right, so I think we've established that the 600 does not have an onboard clock. Um, people talking about acidic things and ice cream at the same time. Um, Well, wow, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Ooh. Right. Uh, David, hello. Welcome to the stream. Went with strawberry syrup on my ice cream. <sighs> oh, yum. I'm hungry. Okay. All right. So uh, I've cleaned up. A little bit around here. I am now going to just get some. We have all said hello to the chicken. 
and I'm now going to just get some. Oh yeah, that was out of focus. Well, oh, I know why. I'm zoomed in. Okay, so there we go. Just going to clean up around here a little bit. And this is all going to go into the ultrasonic cleaner afterwards, which is all warming up at the moment. And this will come out looking absolutely spotless. Um, but I do like to just get these things a little bit clean before I then put the new components on. Um, okay. I am going to try and speed this up a little bit because I know that for certain people it is getting rather late. It'll be certainly on the uh, east coast of the US, I think we're talking about 10 10 20 p.m. So um, some people might want to just sort of kick back and relax and uh, not be fussing with streams. That's that. Okay, so we've got that's all the ones at this side of the board. So we've now just got our little cluster that we need to clean up. This I'm going to do kind of just all together, I think. Boop, 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 boop. Let's just fluxify. I'm just going to put this on, yeah, without the microscope. Flux and flux and flux and flux and flux. Flux. And let's just work our way through here. We're going to need a bunch of solar. Whole bunch of solar. Missed. There we go. These aren't too dirty, thankfully, so there's really not much I need to do with these. I'm going to do the really difficult ones first, I think. Which ones are the really difficult ones, I hear you say? It's a good question. I don't know. <sighs> I'll say, at least these ones I know are nice and quick and easy. It's funny that you talk about a computer without a clock in it, isn't it? I mean, something we just take for, totally um, take for advantage these days. I mean, one of my very first computers was a VZ300. I mean, that didn't have a clock in it. Or VZ200, actually, and then I got a 300. Um, for those who don't know what computer that is, it was uh, the rebranding of, uh, I think it was a laser computer. That was sold out here in Australia at Dick Smith Electronics electronic company that used to exist and sort of exists now kind of they still sell some products under that name but being sold by a different company um, and uh, yes that computer certainly didn't have a clock I can tell you it came with eight kilobytes of RAM as standard you could get a uh, 16 kilobyte expansion um, cartridge and uh, it had I think I think it was sort of like four or six colors they could display I was pretty excited by that I have to say um, eh. Timex Sinclair 1000. Yeah, I would actually love to own a Sinclair. Do you still have a GT? Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, C64, that's a very, very common first computer, I can tell you. I knew a lot of people that had Commodore 64s. And of course, another computer that we had out here in Australia, though probably not as much, we were in schools, but not as much in homes, was a was one called the Micro B. Um, and uh, I would love to own one of them, but they just go for a packet these days. Um, I remember there was a game on it called Taipan, uh, I, which I know exists on other platforms. Um, uh, uh, uh. I came home and programmed Taipan for my computer. 
Except I made it way easier to win because that's just how I am. Um, okay. Just to double check, folks, how's the sound still? Is it all still sounding good? As I mentioned before, I am using a wireless setup today. Ooh. And uh, there's, as it's the first time I've used it, I don't know how well the sound is going to go. Whether I might just suddenly stop making sound at some stage if the if the battery runs out. Um, another nine volt batteries, aren't they? Just the biggest pain battery in the world. Got some rechargeable ones though. Um, cleaning. Sound is good, thank you. Vic 20. Oh, yes, I used to love the old Vic 20 as well. John Rebel, you think the Vic 20 was your first? I saw you were using apples a lot earlier than anyone else I knew. Um, just the, uh, the person in the chat, John Rebel, is an old. Uh, very old friend of mine, and uh, I largely credit John for getting me into computers, I think, in general. Uh, I saw my very first Macintosh at John's house. I don't know how well you remember that, John, but do you know what sort of Mac it was? Was it original 128, or was it a 512, or was it a Mac Plus? Do you have any recollection? Because I tell you what, it blew my mind when I saw it. Absolutely blew my mind. It's still cleaning away here. Right, well, I think that's pretty good. I like the look of that. I think I'm ready to stick new components on this now. Um, so, I'm really, I've, this is really weird. This is really curious. I'm going to show you something here. I'm going to zoom in. I don't know what's going on here. I think someone has done a bodge job on this. But you've got to have a look at this. This is just bizarre. I've just been observing this. So, this is the, this is the connector that you connect the power supply into right here. Right? Just there. Really stupid connector, but you know, that's another story. So let's get some light here. Let's zoom in. See these two wires that have been soldered on? Uh, are they, were they put there to power something else? You know, I mean, they're clearly not meant to be there, and I'm going to take them off because, my goodness, they look like garbage. But that is really weird. So, anyhow, if anyone has any um, theories behind why they're there, I'll be very, very keen to hear them. But this is, uh, this is what we're looking at here. A bit of a bodge solder job here. And some uh, wires that were there and then have been cut. On now. Go on now. Just going to put some uh, some wick on here to get some of this excess solder off. Jeez, there was a lot of it, wasn't there? Nice bit of meltage here. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. I didn't do that. It's not my melt. It's someone else's melt. Not my melt. Okay, Apple II Plus, can't remember if it was before or after the Vic 20 so long ago. Yeah, I mean, we are talking, well, it would be talking mid, I would think mid to late 80s, I guess. But the, uh, yeah, the Mac Plus, it was, I, I, well, so let, I'm going to say Mac Plus, it probably it may not have been a Mac Plus, but I know that I did use that uh, at your place, John, a long, 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 long time ago. But I just don't, I, as I say, I don't remember which model it was. I don't remember if it had plus on the front. It was just a plain uh, Apple. But anyhow, uh, 
Just gonna. Okay, so this, I mean, this is an absolute mess, but I still think it'll be fine. I think it'll still supply power to where it needs to go. Wasn't me. Wasn't me. Someone else did it. Um, now. Uh, sorry, it's got a little bit of this. Uh, sorry, just catching up on the, the uh, chat here. Apple was probably first. Yeah, okay. Wow, geez. That's a long time ago, isn't it? Anyone else feeling old? All right, time to put some capacitors back on. Now, um... I am going to start with probably these ones crammed right up the top here. I, I honestly don't know which ones are the best ones to do first. I'm just going to be, I'm going to be winging it. So we're going to start off with a couple of 47 microfarad 16, another very well-known uh, size on the Mac. Now, interestingly enough, I am not going to be putting 47 microfarad 16s in their place. I'm going to be putting 47 microfarad 35 volt. Now, you might say, well, that's a really weird one to be putting on. Once again, as I mentioned before, I am putting the capacitors on as per that website, which everyone in the Amiga world seems to refer to as being, you know, the definitive guide to recapping. Um, and so that's what he recommends for these. Um, and so I... Um, who am I to argue? Hmm? Hmm? So, as I said before, these, although they look like electrolytics, they are electrolytic polymer hybrids, which means they are far less likely, if not at all likely, to leak. Because they don't use liquid electrolyte, it's my understanding. They use uh, a polymer powder. So, let us begin. As usual, when I'm soldering things, I solder the easy side first. And I think this is the easy side. So I'm going to do this like that. And, 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 just want it to be nice and straight. They always look so much better when they're straight. Do, do. There we go. And do this one. Crammed right up next to the other one. Whose idea was that? There we go. There we go. Looking good, all of that out of camera. Sorry, guys. Just, just keep doing it. I'll just keep doing it. It's, this board is a bit of an awkward size. It doesn't fit underneath my work area particularly well, um, particularly the long end. Ding, dingleberry. There we go. There we go. There we go. Looking good. All right, nice little mounds of solder there. We want these to look like a bullet job, don't we? Yes, we do. <coughs> Right, just looking up at the chat here. <laughs> uh, it's definitely a... Oh, that's definitely a three and a half inch IDE mod that was done quite poorly. Interestingly enough, those those wires were cut. So whatever they went to, they don't go to anymore. Um, So tantalum capacitors can't be used on Amigas. That's not necessarily what I would be prepared to go out and just outright say. Um, I, I will put a link to this website in the description, but there is apparently something to do with the ESR, which stands for resistance. Um, I can't. I can never remember. It's something specific resistance or something. I can't remember. You can actually test capacitors using an ESR meter like this, um, which, you know, tests the ESR. Um, someone, I'm sure, in the chat will know what ESR stands for. But apparently, um, tantalums, uh, aren't, their ESR is too high or something like that. Now, 
I'm, I would not go out and say outright, no, you cannot do this with tantalums. I reckon you could. But as I say, just going based on this guide and what this, this particular person who has done these before has said, I'm going to be like, okay, okay. If that's what, if that is what Amiga um, users want, that's what I'm going to give them. So far be it from me to argue. 100 microfarad 6.3. Now this one we're putting in 100 microfarad 25 instead of a 6.3. Once again, that's the recommendation of that person. Now I'm going to do this one now because I think this is going to be the hardest one to do because I've got very little room for a soldering iron on the other side of this. So let's just have a look. See, uh, let's plus that way. Now I do have a, a bit of an issue with this, and I do not wish to be. That's yep. I do not wish to be, uh, as, you know, disappointing people too much, but. I'm not 100% certain about the power supplies I have for this, so I'm not even sure I'm going to be able to test it after recapping. Um, I, uh, someone, I've got three power supplies here at the moment. I've got my one, which I know is not ideal. I've got one from the person that this board came from, and I've got another one from the other Omega 600 board that I've got. But both of those guys have said they think the power supplies are a bit iffy. So I'm not super keen about connecting up a power supply that might be a bit iffy so i may not be able to test this afterwards um, we'll see i'm just going to pull this across the edge a little bit here so that i've got a bit more room once again i'll do the easy side first but boom easy side done ding -a ding -a ding and then i'm going to try and get around underneath here i'm going to probably have to do this without the microscope so we'll go into our view here this is not a good view, is it? Never mind. Sorry, guys. Wow. Wow. Let's have a look. So I'm going to cover it from this angle. That'll do me. Oh, you're not even seeing it. <laughs> there we go. That's the one I just soldered at an angle. That looks all right to me. I'm happy with it. Oops. Bang that into the wall. All right. So that one is what I would consider to be one of the hardest to put on. So that's good. Um, then we've got a couple more of that size there. So. Uh, plus up and then these two are plus down do 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 <sighs> a lot of repetition in this isn't there a lot of repetition i do appreciate having the company for this because this is a job which I know takes a long time and is tedious and annoying. And it is just nice to have a bit of company while I'm doing it. So thank you everyone for joining. Um, <clears throat> just got to check on the, uh, we're looking at here 28 concurrent viewers thank you to the 28 people who are watching and have been hanging on to watch which is what i think is arguably one of the most boring and tedious things in the world well i i, I assume it is i don't mind it um okay there's that and then i'll need to do this one on the other side before I do that one. So let's get in at an angle on that one. There we go. Looking nice. How nice does it look? Real nice. Real nice. <clears throat> yeah, good, thanks. Right.
Oh, wow. Okay. The rule of thumb suggests that if the 5 volt line reads less than 5.4 volt at the pins, i.e. not connected to the machine, you'll be fine. For over 5.4, and that's dangerous. Oh, I don't want anything dangerous. Don't like the sound of dangerous. So, all right. Well, I might go grab mine then, I suppose. At least that's a sort of a known quantity. I know I have used it before. I need more flux on that. See, the way it's all going yuck now. The solar isn't flowing where I want it to go. There we go. That's better. And then, once again, I have to spin this around at an awkward angle. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? There you are. Okay. Right. <laughs> oh, geez, it's windy outside. A bit blowy. Crikey. Um, right, so then we've got, well, we work our way through this little cluster here. It's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I'm going to do these two now. 10 microfarad, 10 microfarad. These are little ones. Now they're originally 35 volts. We're putting 50 volt on them. 10 microfarad, 50 volt. And I think... Uh, one positive one way and one positive the other way. Yes. Right, so this one is going to be positive up that way. And this one's positive that way. Right. Ah. Uh. Whoopsie. Whoopsie. Stop vexing me. There we go. Just leave it well alone. It was looking good before. Oh God, this is this is where this board really annoys me. It's just it's just a little bit too big for working under my work bench. I would love to just do this out. Let me move this out a bit. There we go. All right. What? <clears throat> so I um I got an Amiga five hundred a while ago, as I mentioned earlier in the stream. Um, I mainly wanted to get it just because I had uh, I had sort of Amiga recapping coming, and I wanted to learn a little bit about it. It had some really, really bad corrosion on the memory expansion, so I ended up going in and buying a new memory expansion, one that's uh, modern stuff. Um, let's see. It's a little bit far down, isn't it? And that one too. I didn't leave myself much room for soldering here, did I? Um, yeah, so it had some really bad corrosion on the memory expansion. So I went online, I found people that are making new memory expansions. So they are using all new components, which is nifty. Um, and they're much smaller as well. So I bought one of those, and then I bought a GoTech. Uh, it was one that had already been flashed for use on an Amiga, which is quite good. Uh, it makes life a lot easier than having to faff around with floppy disks all the time. So, uh, you know, I keep looking at this and I'm really not happy with it. But I think we're fine. We're fine. Stop. Walk away. Walk away. Walk away. Okay, we've got two more from this little section in here. and We've got, oh, they're two different ones. So let me just get this lined up for the guide. Um, okay. Okay, 
Okay, okay. Uh, another 100 and another 22. So this one's 100. Let's do that one first. Hundred mic apparent. I don't keep a whole lot of these capacitors in stock because they're so expensive. So this is why I always like to have a little bit of advance warning when someone's going to send me one, so that I can uh, make sure I've got enough components for the particular recap. I mean, as you can see from what we're doing here, there are quite a few capacitors to be replaced. Um, what is it? It's a grand total of uh, five, six, seven. That's uh, 15, 16, 17, 19. 19 capacitors, I think. So, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a fair amount. I need to be charging even more for these, don't I? <clears throat> I definitely think that in the future I may rise, raise the price for an Amiga 600 um, because, you know, not wanting to be a, you know, an a-hole about it. But at the same time, I don't want to be uh, spending all this time and not getting adequately compensated. Okay, there's that one on. You didn't get to see me soldering that other one, but there it is. Uh, about 30 Amigas at the moment. Okay, well, you're the one that's got them all. Um, they do make um, aftermarket power supplies for... Uh, for the Amigas, I think from memory, I think I remember seeing some on eBay. I don't know if there are any, if there, if the quality is any good. Someone might be able to speak for that. Um, but uh, you know, people have asked me to fix their power supplies. I've never tried one before. I assume they're glued together, so who knows if I can even do it in a way that I don't completely destroy them. I'll try on mine first before I give a uh, customer's one a go. Um, but uh, did I get that? Is that right? Is that right? Is it? Is it? Sorry. Just looking at my guide here. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, sorry. It's just this looks like a spot for a big capacitor. And I've got a little capacitor, um, but I think that might be deliberate. I think the person who who created the guide for which capacitors to put in, I think he actually chose small ones for some of them, so that they're a little bit easier to solder in. So we will thank him for that. Okay. Come on, man. Oh, I really should be coming at this from the other angle. I'm getting better. Here we go. Right, so now I can hold that there like that. Moving it all over the place. There we go. Then I can just come in at this angle here. The, um, it's worth mentioning that, it, that when you see these moving around, this little black thing on the bottom, uh, they tend to wheel around a bit. It's not the capacitor itself. The capacitor is soldered on good and solid, but you just have that little wiggly bit of black plastic at the bottom. Yep. It can be a bit frustrating sometimes because you get the capacitor all lined up and then you find the, the uh, black plastic is crooked or vice versa. Um, okay, well, I think that's all of that little cluster. That was the nasty little spot, so that's good. Um, happy with that. Um, um, just 
just I'm just I just want to double check my work here because I'm just not used to doing these with the uh, Mac ones. I just go, yeah, that's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. Yep, that looks good. So then we've got another of these, you know, another two of these 22s up here. Once again, we're up in up in the danger zone here, uh, up against plastic. So we'll, as usual, do the easy side first. Uh, I'm not even sure if I quoted this person for how much this cost, but um, I'll wait until see see if I've got it working first. <laughs> I'm just concerned. There are a couple of things that are concerning me with this, and I'm just going to um, check once I've finished the recapping, make sure that I haven't accidentally created any shorts or bridges anywhere. So they did make a smaller component for this here. I assume to make it a little bit easier to solder in with sitting right next to that uh, connector. I still think removing the connector was the right thing to do. Um, but it obviously would not have been as hard as I originally thought because these components are a little bit smaller. So dart in and out, solder and go, just solder and go. Without melting plastic. Solder and go. Come on. There we go, that's better. All right. So, I've because I've, I've shifted these up a little bit, they're not sitting down the end. I just want to make sure that I didn't actually... Um, uh, make the pad touch underneath. So I'm just going to get this here and here and make sure I haven't... Oh. Oh. That's good. I want to check with this one as well. We're good. Always good to check your work. I get people asking me, you know, all the time if they've done a recap. And they go, oh, I've done a recap and it's not working. You know, what should I do? Check your work. First thing you do is you check your work. Thoroughly. Get your multimeter out. Okay. Another 10. Just here. Only four more caps of the surface mount variety to go, folks. So we are definitely getting towards the end so uh, those who are sort of just hanging on going oh I want to go to bed but I want to see the end well we're getting there don't you worry I do have to apologize for not doing more streams I'd like to do more streams than I have been doing lately but I've, uh, I've just had lots of uh, work in my day job okay keeping me pretty busy I'm going to be do, doing a stream soon uh, where I go through my laptop collection. I just realized the other day that I have a rather extraordinary collection of different types of Mac laptops from throughout the ages. And I looked at it and I thought, you know, this could be a fun little stream to just fire all these up and see if they work and see what OSs are on them and all that sort of stuff. So that's something to well, look forward to or not look forward to, depending on whether you like Mac laptops. Um, I've still got one that I can't find. I don't know if I gave it away. I don't think I would have given it away. But I'm sure I've got a 17-inch Intel Core 2 Duo, uh, you know, uh, aluminium laptop somewhere. Um, I had it, and I had it all loaded up with software, and now I can't seem to find it. Now, it's probably just in a cupboard somewhere, and I would really like to be able to find it, because... The 17 inch ones don't come up as often. And I do like the old 17 inch ones. 
do, do. Uh, are you going to be able to test it before uh, sending it back? Yeah, I should be able to. Yep. Nate, hello. Um, and so I'm a bit behind here in the chat. Look at this. Oh, wow. Oh, I'm way behind. Sorry. 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 Oh, wow. I'm way behind here. Oh, you know, I just I read some of that. Uh, under change things up a bit, yeah. Such a drink having an AC summit, yeah. Yeah, no, it's, uh, no, no. yeah I, this, there's something quite amazing about sitting in front of a 17-inch laptop. I've actually got a, a unibody as well, 17-inch. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, when you set those things up with a big screen, I mean, it's, it's old, so I can't run, like, the latest browsers and stuff on it. But, uh, um, yeah, it's nifty. Very nifty. So these are the 22. These are the last two of the surface mount. 22 microfarad. Originally 25 volt. Replacing them with 35 volt. Because that's just how I roll, man. Okay. Oh, the ultrasonic is up to temp now. Yay. So I'll be able to clean this afterwards. Well, that'd be great. I do have another little job that I have to do. This little mending job. I don't know if the damage was caused by me or caused by someone else, but I just happened to notice when I pulled it apart that there are all these wires coming out from the lights on the keyboard. The keyboard has little lights, you know, drive activity lights, power lights, that sort of thing. And they are all, well, all but one, were disconnected. They look like they're fairly badly corroded, so it probably wasn't me, or if it was me, um, they were very easy to come off because they were corroded. Need a bit more solder. Okay, there we go. All right, so that is all of the surface mount capacitors, and I have to say I'm pretty happy with the way it looks. I'm just going to jump here to the side view quickly, and we'll zoom out just a bit. And we'll just have a little bit of a look at that. And we can see we've got a little cluster here uh, of all those surface mounts there. And then we've got a couple up here. These are the ones that are right next to the keyboard connector. And we've got then one here, we've got one here, and then a couple over here. So pretty happy with the way they're all looking. Nice, uh, tidy little joints. That's what I'm always looking for. Um, now we've just got our through hole caps and then we have to put the things back on that we pulled off. So um, let's look at that now. Through holes not very easy for me to do on the microscope so I'll probably just keep it on the wider view like this. Um, so um, looking at the guide once again I have excuse me one two one two three four of them in total two of one kind two of another kind. So I'll just grab two of one kind, and I'll grab two of another kind. Ta-da! Right, so what do we got here? This is a 470, and this is a 470. So where do the 470s go? They go, there's one here, with the negative down, one there, and then there's one here, like that. Okay, so then do a little bending on the uh, pins, only a little bit. I don't bend much, just enough so they don't fall out. And then I generally do this in two stages. So what I do is I solder one pin, like this, and then I get underneath it and I melt the solder and just gently push it until it's flat on the board. 
and that is now flat, and then I can solder the other one. Oops, I'm just hitting the mouse for the board here, who knows, I could just stop the stream by accident. <clears throat> Right, let's see how that looks. It's beautiful and flush. Did I just knock some capacitors off the table? Can't blame that one on the fairies, can I? Ah, it's just the one. Okay, that's that. Then obviously we have a little bit of a snippety snoop. Off they come. And then we've got this one here. Same process. Sorry, my, my chin is hitting the microphone, so it's probably making all sorts of horrible noises. Sorry about that. There we go. And snip. Snip. So there we've got two new capacitors sitting on there. I'm not looking at that. Um, it's the little, this is the little, is the four pin connector on the little extended part of the A600 logic board? Yeah, right there. Um, <laughs> ASMR beard sounds. Yeah, we can do without that, can't we? <sighs> okay, so um, let's go. That's going in here. And this one's going here. The right way around. That's a plus, that's a plus, that way, yep, good, excellent. Two hours, woo! To be honest, I thought it was going to take a lot longer than that. Okay. We get a little bit of flux on that joint. Didn't stick too well. Delicious. And there we have it. There we have it. That is what a recapped Amiga 600 board looks like. If, if it's been done by me, that is. I mean, so there might be people out there that do it better and there might be people that do it worse. But if it's been done by me, that's what it looks like. Um, okay. Okay, so let's now put some of these components back that I removed. We've got this little guy here, which is a floppy connector, and I, uh, as I mentioned before, this is one that can go on one of two different ways. So I made a little note for my seer uh, that it goes this way around. I'm just checking something here. Sorry, I'm a big fat ander in the way. Have I blocked one of them? Oh, I have blocked one of them. By the looks of it. Ah, yep, look at that. 
solder in the hole. That happened when I was cleaning. I think the rest are clear. This is the only one that concerns me, this one here with some damage, but as I can see that this clearly does go to that there. So I mean I'll probably just test it. Where does this one go? I'd like I think I'd like to test it once I've got this on to make sure that, that pin is still going where it's meant to go. And it's meant to go from higher. Where is that going? Is it there? Yeah. Okay, so as long as this, whatever it is, R622, once it's in, I'll just check to see if that pin is making contact with that, and I'll be happy. <clears throat> Let's check my little guide again, that way. Yep, okay. Now, remember I was talking about that whole repetition thing before? Just going to do a quick little tack here to make sure this doesn't fall out, and then I will get it under the microscope and solder it properly, and then we can do without the beard sounds. There we go. Right. Whoopsie. Let's work our way along here. Oh, oh I've got a... Uh, who do I talk to when I'm not streaming and recapping? Um, I do it fairly quietly, to be honest. I do tend to just sit here and every now and again I might just make some sort of little comment, but for the most part, when I'm uh, recapping, I just stay completely quiet. Um, so much easier to put solder on than it is to take it off. Mm -hmm. I'm doing these sorts of things here. What I'm looking for as much as possible is I'm looking for each one of these to look as consistent as possible. I'll never be able to make them look the same as if they were done by a machine, but I can still try and get them, you know, reasonably consistent. I don't want one great big mound of solder and one little tiny one. I don't want wonky ones like that. That'll do. What do you reckon? Will that do? All right, so let's just do that quick little test that I was referring to before. And that, I can't even remember which one it was. Uh, it's now covered with a, uh, with a component. So it was from... Uh, I'm going to have to hold this this way. It was from... This one here. Uh, wrong camera to one of these. That one. Yay! We're all good. Like to check, like to be sure. I have chisel tips, but I don't. Um, I really don't like using chisel tips. I use chisel tips for certain tasks. So, um, you know, if I'm putting a particular component down, I generally switch over for a chisel tip. I do tend to use a chisel tip a bit more when I'm using the modern Macs to when I'm working on older computers like this. Um, I nearly said vintage Macs, but this isn't a vintage Mac at all, is it? No. Um, and so 
I, I really like to use the bevel tip. Um, it's, it's just a really nice versatile tip. But it's each, each to their own, each to their own. You know, I mean, there are people that just use chisel tips and nothing else. There are people that use conical tips. There are people that use these for just about everything. These little bent conical tips. Um, that's you know, and that's fine. That's just you know, you you work with what you like to work with. Um, I can make recommendations based on what I do. Um, if, for instance, if you're going to be doing a lot of the cleaning of the pads like I do, I can tell you a bevel tip is really, really good because of that flat edge on them. But, um, uh, but yeah, I mean, um, for pretty much everything that I do, for most of the things I do, I like to work with a bevel tip. But that's just my preference. Okay, so we've got our little uh, coil to go back on, which we established fairly um, definitively that it's some sort of filtery thingy um, I need to try and get this I can't really bend the pins of this so I need to get this tacked on uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some solder onto the end of my tip use flux to make that solder transfer across onto the pin and then that will hold it in place just like that and like that one needs some more solder and like that okay that's held on now with two pins, which is enough, and then we can do the rest. The traditional way, traditional way of using the flux that's actually in the solder itself. So the solder has a little bit of flux running down the center of it. And I am using that to create the nice, nice sort of looking joins here. But when I'm in a situation where I need one hand holding solder, one hand holding a soldering iron, one hand holding some flux, I run out of hands. So I have to then go in and do creative things. All right, that's back. So I, I think I've put together everything I pulled apart. So I think what we do now is we consider this a completed recap. And uh, isn't that wonderful? There it is, uh, all done and dusted. Um, I will probably go and have a little check. I just got that one little task that I was referring to before and I'm going to carry out now. This is on the keyboard. This is the keyboard here. Uh, with some lovely little stars here. Um, who am I to say where the stars should be there? If it's the owners want to have stars on it, they can have stars on it. I've got no issue with that. <coughs> um, Yes, that was the choke I just replaced. That's what it was. It's the choke. Um, okay. Right, so this is the issue that we have here. Let's see if we can get a little bit of a zoom in on this one. We have this little connector that connects into that um, that um, little connector, that little, what is it? It's a Berg connector, isn't it? B-E-R-G. Um, I said that in one of my streams before and someone was asking about you know what's a bird connector b-i-r-d and i thought you know i really should put the words on uh, and actually tell people it is a bird connector um so uh we've got one connected and four not connected now um first thing i need to do is i need to make it so that we have four not connected because i'm not going to try and sort of do this while this is hanging on i'm going to clean up all of these first um and something just dropped out of my thing. there we go all right be right back okay trina we'll just kill time until you get back i'm not going to do anything interesting don't worry okay uh, right so let's just turn this back on uh wait till the adjust light adjusts I should give you a star sticker for good recapping job. I've got a, uh, a website that makes little certificates for you, little PDFs of certificates. I can make myself a certificate. Um, I, haven't, I don't think I've plugged my website in a while, actually. Certificatemagic.com. Jump on. Have a look. It's exciting. Stripping some wires here. I 
might just pull this microscope out this way. Oh man, there's flux all over the handle. Yuck. Yuck. And now it's all over my fingers. Yuck. Okay. Let's continue with this little bit of wire stripping. Getting a nice close-up view of my uh, chubby fingers here. Off you come. Hey, we got them off. And we've got this one. And last one. Okay. It looks nice. Now, I'm going to come back in here. I'm going to grab my little, uh, one of these things, little articulated arms that you can hold wires in so that I can just hold these still while I get a bit of solder on them. It's always a lot easier if you tin these things first, get them all solder, solder ready. Actually, I'm not even sure I need that holder. Yep. Do these two. Focus, focus. Come on, don't fray like that. Stay together. I'm going off camera, aren't I? Come on, there we go. Nice big glob there. Off we come. You can't see that either. That's good. This is great viewing this, isn't it? There we go. Okay, can we get this in focus here? Focus ish. Can't see that. I know you can't see that. Okay. Right. Now I'm just going to neaten those up a little bit. Yep. Yep. I always get a bit of flux on these, but I don't want these to be covered in flux because these aren't going to be able to go into the ultrasonic cleaner. So. So whatever, whatever gunk I put on these, I have to clean it up before I uh, continue. As long as you've got, if you've got nice solder on the two things that you're joining, um, it just always makes it a lot easier. Okay, let's get some of that flux off. So it all looks nice, and let's hope, let's hope I've got a... I've recorded um, how, which one goes where. <laughs> Let's hope. I'm pretty sure I took a photo of it. Oh, God. Did I just... There we go. Okay. Sorry, if there's a crackle, that's just because I'm grabbing my phone here. Um, uh, better not read that out loud. Um, okay. Let's just have a look here. Doo -doo -doo. Oh, look at that. I did take a photo of it. There's a photo of how those wires go on there because this is the advantage of having another Omega 600 here uh, right now I need to clean up these pads because they looked pretty scungy and they've still got wire on them so I'm going to take the old wires off there's one Oh, still stuck to my tracers. There's two. There's three. 
and lose focus. And there's four. There we go. Still sticking to my tweezers. All right. Then we're just going to get a little bit of solder wick and clean up some of that old solder because we're going to put nice new solder on there. Boom. 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 Solder ball. Oh, geez, I'm not, in, not even in camera. This is so frustrating. Hi, guy. I go through so much solder wick, as I'm sure you can imagine. Okay. What did you miss? Not a whole lot. So I've finished the recap. I think I'd already finished it when you went. I have um, tidied up the ends of the wires that I need to reconnect. And now I am cleaning up the pads that they are going to solder to. Uh, and then we are going to solder those wires on, and then we will basically be finished. Um, I have some real concerns about the idea of testing this thing um, on live on stream because, as I said, I've got I do have power supply and everything, but I've got to set up a screen because these have composite output, composite, so I can't plug them into the normal little screen that I've got. That's a VGA that doesn't take composite video in. So I don't even know what I'm going to display it on. I have a little little mini portable TV set type thing that, that's up in the house. Um, so I hate doing it. I always hate doing a recap and then not testing it at the end, but I think I am going to have to not test it at the end. Um, um, and, I, and I apologize for that. But what I always do with these, if I do happen to get something happening, I then try and post that on my... Um, uh, my my Brankus Facebook page, Brankus Creations Facebook page. Um, if it's interesting enough, I will actually do a whole other stream. But okay, just getting some new solder on there, and then I'm going to uh, start with these ones down here first. And we have got red on this side. Ding. Okay, oh, I've got to trim these a bit. bit. There's a little bit too much of the soldery bit at the end, so I'm just going to move this out of the way and trim. 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 All right. All right. Right. So, look at these pictures again. So we'll get back to that. We'll do it again. Red and orange first. So it's, it's these two here. Should probably bend that, shouldn't I? That's, that's, that's uh, my he uh, hands are letting me down here a little. I'm going to bend that a smidge like this. That is one of the ugliest bloody solder joints I've ever done. Don't tell anyone. That's pretty, pretty tasty as well, isn't it? Was me saying I wouldn't use flux. Oh, far out. Who would have thought I was going to get so much grief from these just soldering little wires? Ugly. I'm trying to cut this off, and I'm I'm really 
just starting to think that's a stupid thing. Uh, sorry, I just have to take it away from there. There we go. There we go. Right, that's a little bit better. It will have to do. It's not, it's really not that pretty, but it will have to do. <sighs> dear, 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 dear. Oh dear. Okay, on to the next one. A little bit of flux. Sorry guys, I'm focusing on this so much, I'm really not paying too much attention to the chat at the moment. So if you do have a question specifically for me that you would like me to answer or something like that, please just um, do the little at sign at the beginning so that it stands out on the, on the chat so that I can just hop up and see it nice and easily. And if your comment is something like, oh man, those joints look awful, I really don't want to hear it. That'll do. Sorry, that wasn't even in camera. Sorry. I'm doing a lot of that lately, aren't I? So let's just uh, clean this up with a little bit of ISO. Being short for isopropyl alcohol. Magic stuff. I mean, it's not really. There's nothing magic about it at all. Uh, but those wires are back on. Oh, geez, I'm just banging my microphone thing around here. I hate to think what that might have done to the sound. Oof. Not used to having it on my person. Okay. Well, that's all good now too. So all those little lights are going to work. Yay. Right, so... Uh, I wouldn't use extra flux of wires. Uh, what's in solar should be enough. Yeah, no. I, um, I, uh, I, I did use extra flux because it did need it. Um, but this is a no clean flux, so it's not going to corrode them or anything like that. But, um, yeah, looking good. So let's just get in here with a bit of this. Oh, look at that, Jay. Thank you very much for that uh, kind donation. Or pay the man, <laughs> you will surely see your message. This is very true, we cannot deny that. There's nothing like the enticement of a little bit of money. Incidentally, if anyone does watch my channel and enjoy the content, uh, my website does have a little link, which I think the description does as well, for uh, providing to sending me donations if you want. Um, it's not, um, it's you know, it's not necessary. It's not essential. It's not a requirement, but it is welcomed. But uh, um, I won't get. Uh, I, I'm quite happy for people to watch and not pay. But if they do decide they want to give me some money, I am not going to stop them. So once again, thank you, Jay, for your contribution. Um, in $1.99 Australian dollars, which will translate to something like I don't know, 450 Australian dollars, something like that. US dollars versus Australian, 199 US versus, yeah, something like that. I don't know. I think $2 will probably end up being about $3, something like that. So there you go. Um, made a dollar, just like that. An extra dollar. So there we go. That's connected up. And I think we're pretty much finished. So before I keep talking any more gibberish, I think I might wrap it up now. I am going to drop this board into the ultrasonic cleaner. I will then have a look at the power supplies that I've got and do some tests to see whether I think they're dangerous or not. Um, and assuming they're okay, I will then fire it up and see how I go. I will take some photos so that I can post them onto my Brankus website. If anyone wants um, Brankus um, um, uh, YouTube, uh, not YouTube, Facebook, the other one, uh, my Facebook page, so that uh, people can have a look and and see how it worked and all that sort of stuff. I don't think I have. There's no floppy drive on this one, so this one will just probably start up to the insert workbench screen. But that's good enough for me. Um, and, uh, and so, um, as usual, I will say thank you to everyone for watching. It is 1.30 PM here, so it is definitely my lunchtime. So I'm going to duck off and go and get some food. Um, and, uh, yes, yeah, so again, thank you uh, everyone for watching. Thank you for, uh, being part of the live stream of the recapping of the Amiga 600. Um, 
I'm hopeful that it work. I have no reason to think that it won't, but you know, you never know. But I will keep up to date. I will let people know and uh, let them know how it all goes. So, now, the important thing before I go, Steve, Mac84, are you streaming later today, tonight, to show us your stuff? Or is that happening in another day? So, it's an important question. Very important question. Um, because we we are all pretty darn keen to see what Steve has to show us. So, so uh, we, he needs a little bit of peer pressure. So can we all get on there and say, Steve, stream, please. Steve, 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 Steve. Sunday, I think, is a safer bet. What a cop out. <laughs> it is Sunday. It is Sunday here already. So, um, oh well, okay, have a desk full of junk. That's what we, that's what we, we pay to see, Steve. We pay to see this desk full of junk. Come on. Um, all right, okay, well, we're wrapping it up. It looks like Steve, uh, Steve will be a tomorrow stream rather than a today stream. So, anyhow, so thank you everyone, um, for watching. I do appreciate it. Um, and uh, I will keep you all up to date with what goes on, on with this Omega 600. But thank you very much for keeping me company while I did this very, very long and tedious job. And I will hopefully see you at the next stream. So pulls a funny face and says goodbye.